All right, well, welcome to the week here for uh, the webinar series. Uh, we'll go through the uh, order flow uh, in Bookmap and um, uh, what Bookmap is showing you, uh, how to use it, and showing you live markets uh, that um, uh, applying uh, this knowledge um, within the live environment. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, really bodes well. Uh, you're able to then um, uh, understand what you're looking at, and then you can start to anticipate and utilize this tool uh, to um, uh, within your, your trading methodology, right? So risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors, past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, you can go to bookmap.com for more information. If you're a member, you have access to free resources and then book, uh, support at bookmap.com is our email. So uh, this is where you can find bookmap. If you wanna give it a try, you get a 14 day trial period. Okay, so there's um, a basic and advanced version, and you can see the price difference here. They are billed quarterly, uh, but you do get that 14-day trial period. Okay? And the differences here uh, between the two is the, um, uh, the add-on indicators and the ability to trade from the chart. Okay? Some uh, really important or, or powerful uh, um, uh, confluences. Uh, at some of these levels uh, using some pretty unique uh, indicators here. Uh, the, the basic and advanced are also available with DX feed as a package. Uh, you, can, uh, you can get it that way as well. Uh, or uh, if you want the flexibility, you can either get the basic or advanced uh, and then add the DX feed uh, later. Okay, so you don't have to have the, the package version. It's, it's up to you, okay? Uh, you'll save a little bit of money if uh, you're looking at um, uh, stocks uh, with DX feed, okay? Okay, uh, and then uh, just wanted to show you the bookmap portal, uh, logging in here, uh, and you can, um, uh, you have uh, access to all the, all the uh, webinars and videos, or you can go directly to our YouTube page and you have them here. Uh, I do wanna show you the new education uh, series that we put together, so go to playlists, and then go to bookmap education course, uh, and there's four parts to it, okay? So uh, if you're unfamiliar with Bookmap and you're new here, uh, this is where you can go uh, and uh, start to understand uh, what Bookmap is showing you and how to get up and running using it. Uh, and just understanding these markets, uh, that that's what the course is for, uh, is that uh, you can understand these markets. Uh, and then uh, understand that Bookmap is, is giving transparency in a very unique way uh, that'll help you make decisions. Uh, let's see here, the um, uh, Twitter feed is here, uh, and um, uh, if you wanna follow us on Twitter, uh, as well as subscribe to our YouTube page here. All right. Okay, well, let's jump right in uh, to Bookmap and the interface and, uh, and to show you uh, what's going on here. Okay, so let's take a look at the ES. Okay. And we're gonna go through this exercise here. All indicators as well. Okay, and let's look at candlestick chart. Let's look at a five minute candlestick chart. Okay. All right, now most of us are familiar uh, looking at a, a candlestick chart uh, and understanding the data, open, high, low, close, the, the color of the body, uh, and then starting to also understand the, you know, the wicks, the tails, uh, and um, uh, starting to understand perhaps uh, some of the order flow uh, in, in some of these areas based on just the candlestick and also uh, a few candlestick patterns uh, together. Uh, and this is good. I mean, uh, you know, it's helpful uh, data. However, uh, you're looking at basically about 5% uh, of the, uh, the data out there. And it's not giving you a lot of transparency uh, into how these markets actually trade and operate. Uh, the, um, you don't know where the volume is. Uh, you can add a, a sub-panel uh, volume chart. We can, uh, we can add that here. Uh, and that, that, that's better. Okay, now we're understanding uh, some of the candlesticks uh, and open, high, low, close uh, with some of the volume. So we can see that there was a, a lot of volume here. Okay, uh, and but we don't understand as well uh, what type of volume it is. Uh, actually, Bookmap's um, volume bars chart does split out the volume, so you do get more insight there. 
but uh, usually you just see one big bar uh, and you don't have the distinction between buyers and sellers okay and um, uh, you know so you have a, a better picture of what's going on uh, but there's there's a problem here uh, you don't know the, the the volume where it traded uh, how much traded uh, what type uh, was it and um, uh, in and exactly when okay uh, especially where uh, and, and how much I mean uh, that that's uh, so critical uh, so a lot of us look at uh, volume profiles uh, look at uh, other um, volume studies uh, etc uh, but um, uh, uh, let me. Uh, I'm going to turn on some layers here of data, uh, and we're going to start to um, uh, solve some of these problems uh, that are lacking uh, in the uh, in the current charting platforms that are out there. Okay, volume being one of them. All right. So let me first just turn on the uh, historical best bid and offer. Okay. And uh, now all we're looking at, uh, overlaid on top of the candlestick. Uh, is the historical best bid and offer. So we can we already have a little bit more information here, uh, and this is good. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, at, after this five minute period uh, closed here, uh, we saw a pretty pretty quick move down, uh, and then a, 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 a retest back into this area, and then we saw a move back up. Right? That's how this uh, this candlestick closed here. Okay. And um, uh, this is already giving giving a little bit of a uh, little data and information uh, of the candlestick uh, um, activity, uh, what happened within this five minute period. Okay, but let's turn on the the, uh, the volume, and it's not uh, it's not really giving us a, a clear picture. Okay, and uh, let me take the dot size down of the volume a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, now all I've done here on this candlestick chart uh, is I've turned on the volume dots. So now we're looking at the transactions that occurred uh, on the historical best bid and offer. Okay. So between these two bars, for example, these five minute periods, uh, we can see exactly uh, what traded, what type of volume, where the majority of it, the clusters, uh, traded, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, how long, uh, you know, you can start to gauge some of the speed uh, as well as this quick move down, okay? And we can see the volume that traded down here, okay? Now we have an understanding of what comprises this wick, okay? This is important data, okay? And uh, the problem uh, is solved here. Uh, you're not able to see that on a candlestick chart. Uh, you, you can see some of the, the volume down here in a subchart, but it's not giving you that, that critical information. Uh, you're not seeing um, uh, where uh, it's trading on that candlestick and how much and, and at what period uh, within that five minute uh, time frame. Okay? So uh, already uh, now we have uh, a quite a bit more uh, information of what's going on here. All right? And that's a problem with uh, the current um, charting platforms is you don't see that. In fact, a lot of times what you'll see instead uh, is some sort of indicator or derivative of time, price, and volume in a subchart. Okay? Uh, instead, we're giving you the, the, the transparency here. Okay? Those of you who uh, are familiar with footprint charts are going to know exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, you're going to be looking at that footprint chart. You're going to be seeing exactly the transactions that took place. Uh, versus, uh, you know, you're going to look at it diagonally, uh, bid versus ask, uh, and uh, and who's who won the the battles in some of those areas. Okay. Now let me zoom in here uh, a little bit because uh, we're going to I'm going to show you here uh, as I zoom in. Uh, we have the the volume displayed here. Uh, a green dot, okay, takes place on the. Um, uh, it's an it's a market buy, okay. It, uh, it takes place on the best offer. It takes liquidity. Um, any, any market buys or sells, they, they consume liquidity. Okay? Uh, it's, uh, it's people in the limit order book uh, with their limit orders uh, are providing liquidity. And the, um, the aggressor here, uh, the market buy and sells, uh, they're, they're uh, consuming that liquidity. And that's just how the markets work. Okay? So a red dot is an aggressive sell. All right, so 
Now you can see that some of these dots here have a Pi display. Okay? And uh, that's because uh, so many transactions took place here uh, that uh, we're giving you the overall delta of that um, a cluster of activity here in this Pi display. So now you understand what this uh, consists of. There was more buying here than there was selling uh, in this little Pi display right here. Okay? We can see in this one here is the majority of it's buying. Okay, so you know a quick a quick move down and a quick move right back up. Okay, and uh, if we can see that, uh, I mean, it's just fascinating stuff. Just the volume alone. Uh, look how uh, we came back down and tested where we uh, we see the aggressive buying uh, take place here. Okay, and look at look at the the selling that took place down here. Very little. Okay. So uh, we rotate up again, and uh, the aggressive buyers they, they come back into the into the game, uh, and they they lift the offer. Okay, so uh, just uh, just adding the uh, layer of volume here is giving us a lot more insight to what's going on within this candlestick. Okay, and that's that's uh, very helpful. Uh, however, um, there's a whole other picture here uh, that we're not seeing, and that is the auction. Okay. Uh, in the uh, in a dome, a traditional dome, uh, what you're looking at uh, is the um, uh, the liquidity here uh, at these price levels. Okay, so these are contracts, uh, traders providing liquidity at these levels. Uh, and uh, as you see, I, I move forward here, I scroll forward. We see that these numbers are constantly changing. Uh, they're constantly adding and pulling liquidity uh, in that limit order book. Okay, in a dome. Uh, it's, uh, you, you can read it here, uh, and you can see uh, the numbers. However, when those numbers change, uh, the, uh, the data is not, not uh, it's, it's fleeting, it's gone. Okay? We don't have a record of it. Okay? That's a problem with the dome. Uh, and um, uh, this is something that uh, Bookmap uh, solves that issue, uh, because we take this data here uh, in a dome, uh, and we record it. Okay? And we give it a graphical representation, and then we, we transpose that onto the chart historically. So what that allows you to do uh, is um, uh, to read uh, the auction historically. Okay? It solves that issue of the, the dome data, which is, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of tape readers out there. Uh, and they're, they're reading the time and sales and the volume, uh, and they're looking at the dome to see where the, what the high liquidity is uh, in the book. Uh, but it's very hard to track that liquidity. Uh, they're not going to know a host of information. So let's turn on the heat map. Okay, and what does this look like? Okay, so uh, uh, I might have to adjust the setting here, uh, but immediately uh, I can tell uh, what's going on here historically. And look how look how uh, price is channeling here uh, within what? within areas of high liquidity, okay? So uh, we see uh, an, an order book imbalance in this area here, uh, but, um, and, we, and we trade into it, okay? And some of it transacts and some of it is pulled, okay? There's a, maybe a potential spoofing going on in this area here, all right? So now we're, now we're getting a much clearer picture. Uh, and uh, let me show you what that looks like in the dome, this little area here. All right, so here we are uh, in the dome, and you're going to be reading your dome. Okay, and as I scroll forward, we see we start to see some uh, some contracts uh, join into the, uh, you know, from uh, what we go from, uh, oh, this year at 57 from uh, almost a, a thousand contracts here. Okay, at 57 now they have almost 1,300 or 12 1250. Okay, now look at it. We have uh, almost 1,500 contracts. Okay. They're adding in high liquidity, uh, very close to price. Right here's our best bid and offer, okay. And uh, and and now we're reading the uh, the 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 book, the, the liquidity here uh, in the on the price ladder, okay. And as I scroll forward, look at look at some of the other areas around it. Okay, they're really starting to uh, add in here uh, on the offer very aggressively. Okay, uh, and um, uh, if you're reading the dome. Uh, you're going to have to remember this, remember some of these other price levels, not just 57. And, uh, and then you're going to have to remember, uh, uh, you know, how long they stayed in there, uh, 
this is new liquidity. This is something, a, a new skew in the auction, uh, in the book here. Uh, and, um, and then uh, we can see that uh, uh, price, uh, it, it comes back up into these areas okay, uh, and trades right into it. All right? And now they pull that liquidity. Okay, or at least they did up above here. And let's zoom in and just precisely see what unfolded here. Okay, well, we can see that they pulled a lot of that liquidity. They had no intent to trade here. Okay, we see a, a big market buy here. Uh, and uh, we, we can know exactly what that is. Uh, we can use the, uh, the tool tip here, uh, roll over, and we can see the uh, on the ask here, we have the date the exact time uh, and um, uh, what was on the ask uh, at this uh, price level of 57 and then the volume. Okay, so this dot here is for a volume of 630 contracts. All right, and we can continue to zoom in and look how uh, we just visually or graphically aggregated that data, uh, but it's not aggregated in book map. Uh, just um, uh, you can continue to zoom in and this is what really unfolded okay we're down at millisecond level here in the time timeline as you can see uh, and you can see just a flurry and a cluster of very aggressive volume uh, uh, very very quickly okay and uh, this is algorithmic activity notice how it's the spread out uh, very evenly uh, and uh, look at the the algo here working as well uh, and, um, and now we're starting to get the transparency of what's going on here. Uh, and um, uh, this, is, um, uh, this, this is giving us a lot more insight uh, to what's going on. Okay? Uh, and as, as I zoom out, notice how we take all of that data and then just visually and clearly aggregate it for you so you understand what's going on here. Now, in, in, a, in a footprint chart, though, uh, you're not going to see that. Right, you're, what you're going to see is um, uh, it's just going to sit there uh, until there, there's some other uh, mechanism uh, that uh, makes the uh, the chart rotate. Uh, is based on either time or it could be uh, a specific number of, of rotations. Okay, uh, so um, that's a, a, a disadvantage uh, with the uh, with the footprint chart. All right, and uh, Bookmap uh, solves that problem here. Uh, because we, we've got all the data. So you can understand now the speed uh, that uh, took place here as well. Okay. Uh, and in and the exact information that took place here. Okay. And we also know here now uh, that uh, within this, uh, this area here with this high liquidity that uh, they had no intent to trade. Okay. Very little. So what they're doing is this high liquidity here, 1,400 con 1,500 contracts, but they're they're skewing the auction. Okay, it looks to me like uh, uh, they want to uh, show a, a big supply very quickly to press price maybe down into 55. Okay, where they're waiting to get filled. Okay, and they didn't they didn't get that they didn't accomplish that. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, uh, maybe the I, I don't know. Maybe they got uh, you know tired after waiting for a bit, uh, and then just started to just very aggressively lift the offer instead. You know, maybe this was good enough. Maybe that maybe they they were front running and using uh, the uh, uh, hidden orders uh, to get filled down here on the bid, and maybe the mission was accomplished here. Uh, but uh, we do know one thing: uh, high liquidity, no intent to trade uh, in this. Uh, market for a very short period, uh, you, we can see here, like uh, just just basically a second, right? So uh, and then they then they pull. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, now as I zoom out, notice how we've recorded that information. Okay. Now we're really getting clarity here of this uh, this candlestick and what's going on. Okay. And uh, uh, that's where. Uh, uh, a book map is uh, is, is going to offer you that uh, that clarity uh, to to understand what what this candlestick means, where where the traders are. Uh, these traders down here, well, this is going to be trapped trap volume. Where are they going to cover? Probably up here, uh, and um, and we go up into those areas. All right. So um, 
uh, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, this is um, uh, that this kind of transparency here is uh, uh, what traders are going to demand uh, for uh, uh, you know, trading in the markets in the in the in the near future. They already are demanding it, uh, but we're starting to see the algorithmic activity, uh, and we're we're also starting to uh, uh, just understand all, all of the data together. Okay, so we're reading the auction, uh, and uh, that that is not possible or very difficult to read from the dome, uh, but uh, we can we can still we can go back and read it, uh, and we can start to understand some of these areas. Okay, so if this is traded if this is trap volume down here, well maybe they'll start to bid up in these areas here, you know, uh, and we can see that they did raise the uh, the bid a little bit here. Uh, but uh, instead, now it looks like they're kind of spoofing to the other side, okay? Trying to drive price up into some of these areas, okay? And that's uh, that's currently where we are. We haven't we we did come up and test uh, 60 here, okay? Uh, but uh, and we're looking poised to test it again. All right. Okay. So any questions on this? Let's see, Francisco, more than exhaustion. Um, oh yeah, I mean, um, uh, Francisco is talking about uh, some exhaustion and um, uh, what that means, okay? So, for example, um, in this on this candlestick here, okay, in this wick, we notice that there's a, a large cluster of, of volume trading here, right? But um, uh, look at the uh, the exhaustion points here. Uh, in this little area here, okay. And what do I what do I mean by exhaustion? Okay, I mean lack of trading. All right. So, uh, and this is a, a strategy that uh, actually uh, we cover in uh, part three of the educational series. Uh, it's a it's this is a microstructural example. Okay, it's not a, not a very uh, a big example, but it but it's still holding quite true here. Okay, uh, we uh, we see an imbalance in the book. We see the uh, them hit the bid into a lower area, okay, and then we see them pull it away very quickly uh, by lifting the offer here. And where do we go back to test? We go back to test to find those buyers. Are the buyers still here? Right in this little area, right here, okay. And uh, we don't. We actually we do see some buying one tick above. We can see them uh, here. There's the majority of these guys, and we can zoom in, and I can show you exactly. And I can split this data out here in the column, uh, and uh, and I can show you exactly what traded uh, within this range. Okay, and here it is. Okay, so we have. Um, uh, let me get rid of the VWAP as well. All right. Okay, so uh, almost 1,800 uh, buyers compared to almost 1,400 uh, sellers. Okay, so there's more buyers than sellers here in that range. Okay, but uh, what about this tick here, or one tick lower than that? Okay, well, here, here's what's going on. Uh, we see just 26 contracts sold. That's what comprises this data here. Right, and then no selling. So if there's no selling, and they're not going to drive price lower, because we need a seller to to drive price lower, uh, an aggressive seller, uh, and uh, we're not getting it. So we rotate uh, up. And and, uh, and test here on the offer, uh, and uh, and find more buyers, and they pull price up out of that area. Okay, so this is the market at this point here. It exhausted, and we can we can count how many times it tested it once, twice, three, four, five, six times, and uh, still just complete lack of uh, of selling here. All right. Okay, so uh, now you're starting to uh, to understand uh, what Bookmap is showing you, uh, and uh, the problems with uh, some of the uh, traditional charting platforms out there, uh, as footprint charts as well, uh, and uh, just because of the aggregation, uh, and uh, also because of the uh, uh, the, the time, um, uh, the the rotations, uh, and um, uh, that, that's a lot of this this data here, the speed and, the, and these quick moves and these microstructures and these traps is all going to be all of this is going to be lost in a footprint chart. You are not going to see it. Uh, and um, 
uh, instead, uh, uh, here, uh, you know, we, we, we can uh, start to piece this together uh, and start to see the aggressors, a lack of selling, and then the aggressors come right back in. Okay. All right. I mean, it's possible maybe uh, on a footprint chart if you really zoomed in and we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, a really small time frame that you would start to see this, uh, this bias. All right. But, uh, you know, you can see it here in, in book map. All right. Okay. And then regarding the, the whole other side of, uh, of what's going on here, uh, and that is the auction, understanding the liquidity. And the liquidity it, uh, uh, is basically what the market needs to trade. Okay. Without, without liquidity, um, the, the market, it, it just won't trade. I mean, uh, you know, what, what is the aggressor going <laughs> to, where are they going to take the uh, uh, contracts from? Uh, so uh, uh, understanding this data here and being able to read it uh, is um, uh, uh, very important. Uh, under, understanding that, um, I mean, it's, it's fleeting in that dome. Okay, that dome, you're not, you're just, you'll see the numbers flash and you'll have to remember them. Uh, it can be pretty, pretty taxing. Uh, but here instead, uh, we've got it recorded. All right. Uh, and we can start to push, piece this whole thing together. All right. So let me know if you have any questions on that, uh, because um, uh, you know as well. Uh, you know the like I was showing you here with the uh, tool tip, you can roll over these areas and you get the numeric values. Okay. Uh, but um, uh, you know displaying this graphically will give you the the overall very very quickly and is very effective to understand um, you know some of that high liquidity. Uh, pressing down, uh, and then that lack of um, that exhaustion that we saw down here, uh, and then them starting to lift the offer right back up. Okay. Okay. Let's see, Francisco. Um, more than exhaustion before 10:40. Yeah, yeah, let's see here. Well, yeah, it's right right in this little area here. That's that pocket I think you were talking about. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. No, I absolutely. I totally agree with you on that. Uh and it 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 just it stayed there, right? Uh and it looks that's where it looks like to me the uh, uh the buyer said, "Well, they're not they're not going to take it. So, let's just get in here and let's just get aggressive and 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 lift the offer." Right? And that's exactly what happened. Um, so, um, uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, uh, nice, nice comment, Francesco. Yeah. Foot, footprint chart is, uh, is useless compared to book map. Um, I mean, the footprint chart is, uh, it, it you know, it's, uh, it, it gives a lot of insight. Uh, but, um, uh, to, to start to, I mean, you just, there's going to be a lot of things that are, are lost in that footprint chart. Uh, and th that's a problem. I mean, this, th you're not seeing some of this clarity here and some of the detail. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, you're going to see the numbers here. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you would see like a, a little bit of an advantage in this area. You might, you might see a little more buying than selling. Uh, but um, uh, clearly, uh, you're not going to see this, like this quick move back up, trapped. Uh, and then uh, the exhaustion here uh, within this small time frame. Okay, uh, within uh, well, you know, like a 10-second period or so, and just it just stayed there, right? Uh, and then they just uh, they came in and, and lifted that offer again. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see, Willard or uh, William, um, using Bookmap. Do you reference high time frames? For liquidity, uh, five minutes, fifteen minutes, etc. Absolutely. Uh, this is um, William. This is a, a really good point, uh, and um, we we covered it in uh, uh, I forget what part. Uh, maybe it was part two um, with structure and liquidity, uh, and you know this example here was very micro. Okay, but let's just zoom out here. Okay. And uh, now we're looking at 15 minutes of data between each vertical dotted line. So actually, let's just change this to a 15-minute candlestick chart. Okay. 
this is where, I mean, uh, I mean, we can still see the high liquidity, okay? And and it's it's still very very valid because it, they're waiting into the in the book. It's a it's a you know first in first out market. Okay, so they want to get filled at these areas, and if they want uh, they're a higher probability of getting filled. They're going to stay in the limit order book. They're not going to pull uh, because uh, then they'll give up that advantage of not getting filled. All right. So um, uh, you know you can see up here longer term uh, that um, look at how they started. We can read the auction. Uh, in um, in fact, let me let me let me do something here. I'm going to. We're going to take all the volume off, okay? And let's take the candlesticks off too. Now let's leave the candlesticks on. Uh, that's fine. And um, all right. So now we're just looking at liquidity in the heat map and this 15-minute candlestick chart, okay? And uh, and we can start to uh, uh, understand. Uh, look how they came into the book here. Uh, after or right before 10 o'clock okay so they want to be buy or they want to be sellers up here and they want to be sellers up here a point a point further up at, at 2460 and again a point further up here at 2461 okay these are larger players okay every point they're showing higher liquidity here all right and um, you know we start to move up into these areas and then we start to pause here it's because of this higher liquidity here. Uh, it it, it kind of shakes up the auction, uh, and um, we can uh, we can start to gauge uh, the uh, uh, an understanding of this auction now. All of a sudden, like uh, they're showing some supply, right? Uh, and um, uh, jumping into the book here, uh, and think of uh, this auction uh, at, with with like an automobile. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, people coming to the uh, to auction with uh, all sorts of automobiles. Uh, they want to be sellers now. Okay. Well, um, you know that had a, that had an effect on price, or it will have an effect on price because uh, if there's more supply, there's competition, and um, uh, if there's competition uh, and and oversupply, well, you, you know they'll they'll probably uh, drive down the price, and uh, that's what's going on here. Okay. This longer-term liquidity, okay. and you can see the longer-term liquidity also here uh, on the bid. And uh, William, your question is, uh, well, how, how can this be helpful? Well, I mean, look where we're channeling right now. We're, we're channeling still between these higher areas of liquidity. Okay, look how the the battle didn't even really take place up here at 60. It, it looked like they were going to take them on, right? And they didn't. And we can see the price action now and the move to the downside. Okay, so um, uh, and we can also see some high liquidity uh, following uh, on the offer at uh, you know from 60 now to this uh, 58 and a half. You know, almost 1,400 contracts there. And uh, what about where are they on the bid? Well, they're starting to. They just pulled some of the liquidity here at this 55 and a quarter. Okay. But they're adding up a little higher now, okay. And let's zoom in here, uh, and let me uh, let me play around here with the setting just a little bit. All right. Okay, and we can see how they're starting to pull a little bit here, but they're they're starting to um, also add up in these areas here. Okay. Here's another little skew in that auction right here, okay, pushing price down, right? Okay. Oh, good. Okay, so I, I answered that for you, William. I mean, uh, uh, because we get this question all the time about is, is this still apl applicable to uh, the higher time frames? And yes, it is. Uh, uh, there are many, many bookmap traders uh, that are trading off of much higher time frames. Uh, and um, they're looking for, um, uh, you know, how the how the price is behaving within that high liquidity, All right? And the, and then they want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe join in at, at some specific areas where they see an advantage 
uh, in that auction. Okay, and again, uh, if you're trading off of the dome, uh, you're really going to lose all, all of that. Uh, you're not going to be able to understand that. Instead, you'll be looking at you know traded volume. You want to understand that this 60 level right here was pretty key. Okay, uh, and uh, look at them add up above in, in these areas too. Okay, and uh, and and look at them driving here uh, with high liquidity. They're still pressing. Uh, following down with high liquidity on the offer, and it looks like we're headed right to our 55 target here. Okay, now where they they failed to meet that area before. Right. Okay. All right, uh, Cheta, um, could you explain the advantages of hidden orders? Uh, feature phone I've seen is showing about volume and hidden orders. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, what Cheta is asking about here uh, is the um, uh, iceberg uh, orders uh, and the iceberg detectors. Okay, so we have an add-on indicator here. So let me, uh, I'm going to take off the candlestick chart. We're going to add the volume back on. And I'm also going to add the indicators back on. Okay. All right. So what Cheta is asking or inquiring about here uh, is the um, these uh, add-on indicators uh, and um, uh, like this 605 here, okay, or this 1231 here, okay? Uh, this is uh, a, a, an indicator that we have with the um, uh, <laughs> yeah, hooray! You like the, the you don't like looking at the candlesticks, uh, uh, Francisco. Um, well. Uh, it's important, though. I mean, to to make that distinction, uh, understanding like um, uh, a time frame and what comprises that time frame. All right. So, um, in fact, uh, I forgot to put on the best bid and offer. Okay. Uh, and um, so, okay. So uh, we come up into some of these areas up here, and we don't fill that high liquidity uh, at sixty. Right. So uh, there's um, a way of uh, for larger players to uh, get their fill uh, before um, this high liquidity, or uh, let me let me take a step back. Um, it's, it's, it's possible to not show high liquidity in the book, but still get filled with uh, a hidden order uh, at that area. Okay, so that's exactly what this um, uh, detector uh, displays. Uh, it displays um, volume that traded, but it but it wasn't shown in the limit order book as liquidity. So how can you have more trade uh, than uh, what was uh, here on the offer? You can't, right? Well, I mean, it is is physically impossible for something to sell um, uh, that uh, isn't uh, uh, for sale. Uh, but uh, using that hidden order type, uh, it's it's kind of like a you know, it, it, it just doesn't show in the book. So it's not displayed, but it's there. And that's what the, these numbers represent, okay? The trades that actually uh, uh, transacted, but uh, from contracts that weren't in the limit order book. So now we're getting a lot of insight uh, by adding these confluences into the chart as well. Starting to understand that we're channeling between high liquidity, right? And we're also seeing here uh, larger players starting to get filled here, all right, just because uh, I, I'm looking at the bigger numbers here because we get icebergs all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of large players that exclusively use icebergs, all right? So um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, we can we can see that uh, uh, in this area here, uh, there's a, they're getting filled here, right, in this little zone. Uh, and uh, we come up and test into uh, just a, a tick we don't even, yeah, we did actually test right here into, into 2460. And you can see them pulling here, right? But they're getting filled with their iceberg orders, okay? You can see them, they're also here. Maybe, maybe they covered uh, down here with an iceberg as well. Uh, or maybe, the, you know, this is that big battle between buyers and sellers, okay? Uh, whatever the case is, uh, we can see that the out of this auction that took place here, the sellers won. All right, and uh, we can also see them here when we drop down below 
uh, this range right here, now we can see them get on the get aggressive here with their limit orders on the offer. Okay, fourteen hundred contracts here. Okay, so perhaps uh, this is the new trading range. Okay, so uh, the bigger range is here, okay, between fifty six and sixty. Okay, but this other micro range here is now between this. Um, uh, let's just call it fifty six uh, on up to this fifty eight and a half area. And uh, it, maybe we'll come back up here and test uh, and then trade right back into the range. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me get to a few of the questions. Um, okay, so Lawrence, I, I just covered that uh, uh, iceberg detector. Um, now, there are some settings for it as well. So we can click here on uh, studies configuration. And we can, we can click on Iceberg Detector. Uh, and um, uh, basically what you get is, um, well, you, you know, display on the chart, the different colors you can add. Uh, and you can also have a, an alert, okay? Um, you can enable it uh, here. And then you have a, a size filter for it. So if you're looking for icebergs, um, you know, over a specific amount, uh, then uh, you will only get that alert when uh, it, it hits that uh, minimum size. Okay, and that's that's again that's a part of the Bookmap Advanced subscription. Okay, great. Ah, oh, CAD, CAD and oil. Um, didn't I add CAD into this? Uh, no, sorry, Francisco. Okay. Okay, a few more questions, and uh, we'll wrap it up here. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Chet, I, I think that answers your question. Could be when liquidity is withdrawn, that's key. Um, yeah, Francisco, I mean, uh, when the liquidity is, is, is drawn, um, you know that that's uh, I, maybe your your point is uh, you know because this was some minutes ago uh, an imbalance in the book absolutely absolutely uh, for example we and we see this all the time okay so look at the withdrawal of liquidity in these areas here okay we can see it right uh, and um, uh, that would be rather difficult to read in the in the dome okay that's the problem with that dome. Uh, but look at look at how it got dark in these areas here. Okay, so uh, they're pulling they're pulling liquidity, right? And uh, you, you can you know it doesn't take much to understand. I mean the way that these you know if you if you understand just basic market mechanics that if the sellers wanted uh, they can um, they can charge down here through this area because there's not there's not much liquidity. But instead, we get the exact opposite. We get total exhaustion uh, at this little area here. Okay, and there's no liquidity around it anyway to trade. Okay, so it, it rotates back up, looking maybe to trade this uh, 60. Okay, the higher liquidity up here. All right. So yeah, good point on that about the withdrawal of liquidity as well. Uh, very important. Right. Okay, and uh, let's see here. Um, icebergs could mean pressing the contra uh, contrarian uh, to run. Uh, maybe. I mean, um, you know, the one thing with a with an iceberg order though uh, is, is they are getting filled, right? They are committed. Okay. Uh, and uh, they're using a the hidden order uh, on purpose. I mean, so they so they're not seen. So um, you know, I I uh, I, I kind of tend to think that um, uh, the you know the icebergs like you know why why would they? I mean, if they wanted to uh, show a skew, um, you know, why wouldn't they just show it in the limit order book, right? Okay. 
Uh, let's see here. If we place a uh, Tom, if you if I place an iceberg sell order, who am I selling uh, to? If it's not on the book, um, well, it, it's possible. I mean, you're still in. It's a centralized limit order book from the exchange, right? And um, uh, it's an order type like a limit order or like a market buy order. Uh, and um, uh, you know, it's a hidden order, uh, and uh, it's uh, it it costs a little bit more uh, to use. Okay. Now the way it used to work with icebergs is, um, uh, you know, a little little different. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, you know, they'll just con continue to replenish uh, that area. Uh, but the uh, you know that that'll all happen kind of automatically now. Um, so let's see. <laughs> okay, Francisco, you really want to go over that CAD? Okay, yeah, we'll we'll do that. Uh, in fact, uh, I will uh, I will add it right now. Okay, I'm going to unsubscribe from the Euro. Uh, and we'll, let's add in our our CAD. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Okay. All right, so we'll take a look at that tomorrow with oil. All right, all right, guys. Well, um, let's see here. Uh, it's been kind of, you know, uh, we haven't really seen much. Uh, what we uh, we covered some some pretty nice little areas though, uh, showing uh, uh, you know the advantages of book map, but um, uh, also I mean this, these were kind of important areas here uh, in the in the structure. We can see that we you know we rejected out of this area down here, uh, traded back up. Uh, went sideways for a while, and then we saw this break down here. Okay, and now we're we're we were looking for a return back up into that area. Okay, and we still haven't gotten it yet, but uh, it has bounced a you know a little bit, uh, and uh, and they're still aggressive here, right? Uh, they're still showing higher liquidity uh, at 58 now, uh, as well as as this uh, originally the 58 and a half. Okay, uh, but um, we can also start to in, uh, understand uh, these fractal, you know, natures uh, of this of the markets uh, because uh, let's take a look here. Okay, so w what do we have here? Well, uh, we have the high liquidity is up here. Okay, uh, and let me let me fix this uh, volume profile because I, I want to. I'll, I'm going to end with this. I, I want to show you uh, how liquidity behaves within volume profile. Okay, uh, and and here's our answer. Wow, look at them on. Look at them get aggressive here. Okay, uh, at 58 now. All right. So um, I'm looking. I'm looking for a test down here to 55 because that's where the liquidity is. All right. And this is our bigger range right now. Okay. And we're we're trading be between this bigger range, but we can see them uh, in the in the limit order book. Okay. So we know. We know that uh, that's where the liquidity is, and that we can anticipate this kind of range-bound activity. Okay, that's the longer-term liquidity, and the shorter-term liquidity here. This very high but short-term liquidity is skewing the auction, pressing price uh, uh, into some of these longer-term areas. All right, but um, anyway, my point uh, here was um, about uh, uh, the larger structure and liquidity, okay? We see our volume profile and we see the liquidity. And then now we're seeing uh, a microstructure develop uh, within this uh, more macro picture here. We had a trading range here, okay, between 58 and 60, and we broke from it, okay? We're still in the bigger channel, okay? But now we have a new trading range. We are between 56 and 58, and that's currently where we are trading, All right? And we see a shift in the liquidity as well, All right? Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up here. We'll we'll um, we'll end on that note. Uh, but um, uh, you're going to see these things occur again and again, uh, and uh, starting to understand uh, this behavior. 
uh, is is really uh, it should allow you to really um, uh, pinpoint uh, you and enhance your uh, your trading execution uh, because uh, now you know exactly where they're lined up to buy and sell uh, and um, you can also uh, uh, mix that with uh, all of the uh, the volume right uh, understanding that distinction between that longer term liquidity and the uh, the shorter uh, high liquidity all right guys yeah so uh, uh, have a good day uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and we'll catch up with you tomorrow okay bye bye